Math has always been my favorite subject in school. Every question has an answer, every problem a solution. I believed that if you knew enough math, you could solve any problem in the universe. But one day, I discovered something that changed the way I saw math forever. In my algebra textbook, there was a lesson on division that clearly stated, it is impossible to divide by zero. According to the text, the expression 1 divided by 0 has no answer. I was dumbfounded. How can something so elegant and unlimited as algebra fail at something that seemed so simple? Rather than take the textbook's word for it, I went on a quest to find an answer to the impossible problem. Here is my guide to dividing by 0. Let's start with a simple fraction, say 1 divided by 1, which equals, well, 1. Now, Let's take the denominator and make it a little closer to zero, like 0.5. Now, our answer is two. If we keep making our denominator closer and closer to zero, we get bigger and bigger answers as a result. Looking at a graph of the equation y equals one over x, we can clearly see that as x gets closer to zero, y approaches infinity. Doesn't matter what number you're dividing, the graph still goes up forever as you get close to zero. So, is one divided by zero infinity? It's tempting to say yes, but we've only looked at half of the problem. Try using negative values for x. You'll quickly see that when we approach zero from this direction, we actually approach negative infinity. So where do the two graphs meet? They don't, actually. This is called an asymptote, specifically a vertical asymptote, which basically means there's no right answer at this point. Here's a different technique. For any expression a divided by b equals c, you can reverse it to say c multiplied by b equals a since multiplication is the inverse of division. Now, let's try it with the expression. One divided by zero equals something, we'll call it m. We can reverse the equation to say something multiplied by zero equals one. You might realize that there's something wrong with this expression. We know for a fact that any number multiplied by zero equals zero. So there's no value for m that can ever satisfy the equation. In this case, we say m is undefined. Let's try looking at this a different way, logically. The classic example of division is, if I have this many cookies and this many people, how many does each person get? Six cookies and two people? Everyone gets three. Four cookies and eight people? Half a cookie for each of them. Now, what happens when we have zero people? How many does each person get? Now, you might think the answer is zero, since nobody gets any cookies. But let's look at this question a little more carefully. If there are zero people and one cookie, how much does each person get? The question is contradictory. First, it says that there aren't any people, but then asks how much those people get. It's like asking a bald man what color his hair is. The question just doesn't make sense to begin with. All right, maybe division by zero is impossible. Who cares? It's not like you'd ever need to do it in real life. Actually, there's an entire branch of mathematics that's based on this idea of dividing by zero. Differential calculus. Let's say you have a graph and you wanted to find the slope. For linear graphs like this one, it's pretty easy. Draw a triangle connecting any two points, and divide the height by the width. But what about when our graph is curved, and we want to find the slope at a specific point? We can draw a triangle that connects two nearby points, and the slope we get is pretty close to the real answer, but it's not perfect. If we make our triangle smaller and smaller, we get closer to the actual value of the slope. But when we try to make our triangle so tiny that it's right on the point, we run into a problem, dividing by zero. A triangle this small would have no width, and we just proved that you can't divide by zero. Differential calculus gives us the tools to solve this problem, using something called limits. With limits, we can use some fancy math to dodge around the division by zero and find an answer without breaking the rules of algebra. The math at work here is a little too technical for this video, but basically we can cancel out the zero using another zero in the numerator. The remaining fraction is our answer. This revolutionary technique was invented by Isaac Newton, the physicist and mathematician who also discovered gravity. In the end, I wasn't able to divide by zero. Algebra just doesn't allow it. But by trying to figure it out, I discovered an incredible trove of mathematical knowledge that I never would have found if I hadn't challenged my textbook. I think the lesson here is that just because something's impossible doesn't mean you should give up on it. That's the beauty of math, finding solutions to impossible problems. So next time you see something in your textbook that doesn't make sense to you, don't just shrug and move on. Investigate. There's usually a whole world of mathematics beneath it, just waiting to be discovered.